Thomas. How you guys doing? Hey, it's good to see you again. This is a little bit of a different video as compared to my usual stuff because uh, I'm all out of content right now. So I thought perhaps I'll just go ahead and take you along throughout the beginning of my day before I get to what I want to do. And what I plan on doing today, I'm going to get back on the iron head. I'm going to end up pulling the top end apart, uh, take a look at it, review what I talked about the last time we looked inside the cylinders and uh, play it by ear and we'll see what happens from there. So what I'm doing at the moment, I gotta run a few errands and then I'm gonna get back to the house and see what happens in the garage, all right? So see you guys there. But for starters, I'm gonna check my mail, see if there's anything in the PO box because lately I've been getting stuff on a regular basis from you guys. So let's see what may be in here. All right guys, looks like I got something. I guess when we get back to the house, we'll just be opening some boxes before we get started on the motorcycle. You guys are too kind, you know that? This is from Redwood Rider from Eureka. It doesn't really say what state it is, but I guess I'll find out eventually. Looks like a couple of calendars. That's pretty cool. Thanks. Thanks, Redwood. Let's see what else. A letter that says, he says, Saddle Tramp, just a few things to say thanks for helping get through the long days at work. You are a class act, calm and truthful. Thanks, Redwood Rider. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words, Redwood. Um, it says, move. move. Move it. Okay, that's what it says. Dump and run. Very kind of you, Red Rider. I really appreciate that. Really, really, really cool. I'll definitely be able to put these to use too. This is from Ray Walters from Bloomfield, New York. And I have no idea what this is. Let's see what it is. Octagon shaped oil tank. Now that's pretty cool. You know, I'd already have an oil tank that I plan to use on the iron head, but I know this will certainly come in use for another project later on in the future. I do have that Evo Sportster motor that I first built for the Tramp that I plan to do something with one day, so I don't have an oil tank for that one yet. So anyway, this will definitely contribute. Thank you, Ray. Thank you so much. Now that I got that far in the day, I guess I'll get started on that iron head now. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is like what I was saying earlier, that I'm gonna pull the top end apart. I'm gonna pull the heads off, and I'm gonna pull the cylinders out and also pull off the pistons. And also go over the review that I gave several videos back about this engine so that you guys who are new to this saga will be up to speed as to what's going on and we'll figure out what's going to happen after that. So without any further ado, let's get to wrenching. Some of you have already noticed and about to comment down in the comment section 
where the push rods at you'll see there's no push rods in here now as I said I had the heads off already before I take the rest of the motorcycle apart I'm gonna take those heads and I'm gonna put them back up on the cylinders and go ahead and put my push rod tubes back in here basically to seal up the motor the best I can and so when I put the motor back together I didn't put it back together back together I just put the heads on and and plugged up the intake ports and the exhaust ports and put just put the push rod tooth back on just to seal the motor up so that I can pressure wash the engine because there's so much grime and gunk all over the motor uh, I don't really want to pull the cylinders off and have more crap fall down inside the engine case and all that kind of stuff because the last thing you want to do when you pull a top end off completely off is when it's covered with road grime and oil and dirt and grit is that you do not want that stuff falling down inside the engine case once you pull off the cylinders so that's why you don't see any push rods so that's that now onward forward This is what we've got so far. I've got my heads sitting right there. These are my cylinders. These are my pistons laying here. There's the top end all taken apart. You always want to put a rag right there around the holes where the cylinders slip into. That way, whenever you're taking your pistons off, you don't accidentally drop one of these C-clips down inside the motor case. What I've got going on right now, I've dumped some gasoline in the combustion chambers right here. And over time, if there's any fuel that leaks through here, then I know I will have to have new valve seats. And probably maybe new valves or just have the head reworked. I don't see any seepage happening there. And I don't see any happening here yet. What I'm going to do now is show you guys what I was talking about several videos back about this motorcycle. When I had the heads off and I looked down inside the combustion chamber or down inside the cylinder, this is what I saw. I don't know if you can see it, but right along here, it's all rusted from where the piston rings had rusted the cylinder walls from this thing sitting for so long. The piston's got some, some wear marks on the back side right here, and it's not smooth. And this piston here, as you can see, it's self-explanatory. It's a little worn on the side walls, and it's got some scrape marks on the other side too. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to take these cylinders down to Scooters and I'm going to ask Kenny to see what he thinks about this whole ordeal. And then when we get back, we're going to take a look at the heads to see if they're leaking or not. And if they're not leaking, we'll know we won't have to rework the heads. The cylinders are going to have to be bored. And because that's true, you're going to have to have some piston rings that fit that bore size. Hopefully I won't have to get new pistons, but it looks like I might. So. Enough talking, let's get down the road to scooters. Ten over. You can see 10,000 with a tape measure. You'll see. 187, exactly the size of, I guess it is a standard board. I told you. That's an iron head. <laughs> Whoever put enough miles on an iron head to bore pistons. <laughs> STD. STD standard. Okay, yeah. As I was looking at a piston that was full of carbon, Hollywood clean one, or maybe it was, didn't even need it, but they're standard, so I'm ordering 10 over. Cylinders get bored 10 over. Yep. And then they get new pistons with 10 over rings. Right. Okay. And the pistons will be fitted. So they'll actually be in the cylinder already. 
Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. They'll be fitted for the poor. Yeah. I have to put it together for myself. For the cylinder. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, that's cool. So I'm getting new pistons and uh, getting new rings and I'm gonna bore over the cylinders. Uh, apparently, yeah. like we said, it's, it says STD on it. Not that it has an STD, it just is an STD because it's an iron head. So, oh, yeah, that's gonna be that. Head. What do you think? Yeah, you know? well, um, um, like I said, they're standard pistons because nobody put enough miles on an iron head to <laughs> uh, have to go through it except drummer. Yeah, just like I said, you see an iron head coming down the road, it ain't broke down, but it's about to be, so. <laughs> oh well that's that so you know what we're gonna get board out cylinders and new pistons and rings and and a few odds and ends here and there but that's that then so park it back in the garage and it'll all be good yeah <laughs> and then anyway guys we're gonna get back to the house after this and take a look at those heads and see if there's any gas leaking through those valves and then if not then we'll be all right we'll be good to go with those so until then we'll see you at the house but before we do, <laughs> okay, now we can get moving. Okay, back here at the garage. Let's take a look and see what these heads look like. You know, I guess I could have done a better job by putting these things on a table instead of having to get on the ground. But anyway, doesn't seem to look like the gas has receded. So what's it look like in here? Well, it looks to me like, like it's not leaking through. Exhaust looks pretty good there. Exhaust port here, pretty dry. And this side looks pretty, pretty dry as well. That's pretty cool. So, uh, there's the motor, there it sits, ready to have a new top end put on, new cylinders, new pistons, and once that gets put on, as I said in another video, I'm going to go inside this primary and see what it looks like on the inside. I, when I drained the oil, a piece of metal came out of there, it looked like some kind of a clip. Well, somebody who knows a little something more than I do, because I don't know it all, said that the clip that holds the chain tensioner shoe back in the day used to come off. So that might be what that is. If that's what it is, then it's an easy fix. But this is becoming more and more of an adventure. I mean, taking things apart is one thing, but putting them back together, like they're supposed to go together, and then making it run, that's a whole nother story in and of itself and a whole nother adventure. Oh, and by the way, I also want to give a shout out to a new friend on YouTube. I've never met him in person, but I've talked with him several times on the phone. And he's not as experienced with wrenching on his own motorcycles as I am, and I'm not saying I'm anybody, but he just bought himself a Sportster that has sat for eight years or 10 years, I can't remember. And he bought it sight unseen, delivered to his house, and it's a not a bad looking bike, but everybody knows that you leave a motorcycle sitting for that kind of time, it has to have some attention to get it going again. And it's an 04 Sportster, so it's not like it's an Ironhead, it's an Evo. So I said all this to say this, you guys who also know how to work on your stuff, I'm gonna leave this guy's link down below to his YouTube channel, because he's making videos about this bike, and the name of the channel is Trip on Two Wheels. You guys, go ahead and check him out, subscribe if you will, because he's gonna need all the help he can get. He asks me questions all the time, but I know somebody else with more knowledge than me can give him some ideas down in his comment sections below. So anyway, that name is Trip on Two Wheels. But anyway, I thank you guys for watching. And so if you like what you've seen so far, go ahead and hit like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I have no idea what I'm going to film next about this scenario right here, but I promise you, it will be interesting. Iron heads are interesting and they're a saga in and of themselves. But however, you guys keep the rubber side down and you be good to yourselves. And thanks a lot.